gone are the days when it was impossible to conceive generation of high dimensional data. The thin air between reality and imagination is coming to a close with onset of GANs. With the advent of GANs and its variants, we can learn to generate high dimensional images by progressive GANs which reminds me of wavelets. Or you can also learn disentangle representation via InfoGANs which borrows the concept using information theory. Here's a list of 10 GAN papers we're gonna review this time. The focus will be on math intuitions which form the backbone to these papers. So grab some popcorns and let the countdown begin. Latent vector mapping in proper Y Cause the vectors and images ain't walking side by side Here comes info GANs to unite the impossible by maximizing the mutual information First in the list we have info GANs Which tries to learn disentangled representation in a completely unsupervised manner I find this paper really interesting because it rightly applies the concept of mutual information. Now this mutual information is defined as the amount of extra information learned for x if we know another variable y. It is like information gained about the swing of the cricket ball based on the knowledge of weather forecast. This is simply self entropy minus conditional entropy. Edge of x given y is the amount of confusion or randomness which is eliminated because of the additional knowledge of y. This yields us a term which has less entropy or more confidence. Here, we want to maximize the mutual information between the latent vector and the generated image. This means the latent vector and the image should be approximately mapping. That's cause the knowledge of the image will directly correspond to the knowledge of latent vector unlike the normal GANs where the same image can be moved to or entangled to multiple latent vectors or many regions in the latent space. For achieving this disentanglement, we introduce an auxiliary neural network Q which maps back the generated images to the latent vectors and maximizes this mutual information between the distributions of C given X and the original C. This is done by minimizing the entropy term. The representation becomes absolutely disentangled if this log logic term becomes zero and li becomes equal to hz. I mean, this is a very beautiful application of information theory in GANs. The paper that defied the gods of GAN Storming Reddit and Twitter with new mid fans Out of the fans, Yan got fellow is one Relativistic GAN says, here I come Recently I came across this post on Reddit ML group about relativistic GANs The idea not just blew my mind but even Ian Godfellow himself had to tweet in appreciation. The author has aptly argued an interesting point in GANs. It says that the math push by discriminator to classify real as one is catastrophic in learning process. In fact, it says that this should have been taken care of in the very first paper of GANs. Brave, right? This got me into reading it and I found out that the argument is quite valid. Now, why would we want the discriminator to be bad for real images? Sounds counterintuitive, right? But when the generator has sufficiently learned to produce real images, this highly annoying habit of discriminator to put everything in brackets of 0 and 1 can make the system unstable. In reality, both for real and fake images, the values will be hovering around 0.5 and even a small nudge from 0.5 to 0.55 for the fakes by generator can possibly lead to fake being more real than real itself. This is an extremely unstable mapping, like an inverted pendulum. Therefore, the paper says that like WGANs or BGANs etc, the loss of the discriminator should be relativistic so that the generator learns better. This discrimination is also brought down by maximizing the difference between the critics value for reals and fakes. 
Now the paper has two answers to this, which can be applied to most of the existing architectures. The discriminator is called critic in this case because it is no longer discriminating as such. It's rather giving a critical value for real and fake images. 1. Maximize the sigmoid of the difference between the critic's value, which is referred to as R scan. The other variant is relativistic average standard GAN, which intends to consider different losses for real and fake images. For fake images, the loss minimizes the difference of fake images critic value from the mean average of real images critic value and vice versa. This improves the overall stability of the critic and also allows the generator to peekaboo the overall loss function while it was restricted to act based on only one of the above terms. But in standard GANs, the generator was oblivious to one of the terms. So all I can say is that this is a fantastic analysis and proposition. You get 100 credit karma. Roses were red, violets were blue, until I trained cycle gun, now everything is new. Next up we have cycle GANs. The idea used in cycle GANs is truly amazing. Learning direct domain transfer is quite interesting. I guess this horse to zebra image mapping has done a lot of rounds on Twitter and other social media. And why not? It's worth it. The goal here is to learn the mapping G of X to Y. The generator is not picking up some latent vector to generate. Rather, it is using the image to bootstrap. Now we use the normal adversarial loss term, treating g of x as the generated image and y as the real image. Similarly, we also have a complementary term which learns the reverse mapping. But there's a fear that we may lose the features from the original image completely and hence the constraint is needed. Therefore, we introduce the cyclic constraint for both mapping and reverse mapping operation. The overall loss looks something like this, which is having loss corresponding to the original mapping operation, the original inverse mapping operation, and the cyclical mapping operation. This is a simple but powerful idea for domain transfer. Attention please! We have Sagan here, making GANs roll I without fear. Sagan is a recent paper published by Hans Zang et al, co-authored by Ian Godfellow himself, where he talks about bringing attention mechanism in generators and discriminator of GANs. This is done by applying one cross one convolution across the full depth of features, followed by a dot product to give an attention map. It's followed by multiplication of softmax version of this map with original features, so as to boost the features in the region of attention. The attention map improves because this 1 plus 1 convolution filters are learned to give the best results. Best thing is, only very few weights are there to learn. It is giving one of the best inception score as compared to its counterparts. GANs ain't good for high resolution, but what can be the possible solution? Progressively increase the complexity like wavelets, ProGANs made it easy peasy. Now progressive GANs are one of the coolest application driven papers. The idea of the paper brings back the memory of good old wavelets, that is, it progressively increases the complexity of learning task, just the way we teach stuff to kids. We first ask it to learn the distribution of 4 cross 4 image, which is highly downscaled version of the original image. Then we slowly add the layers to both generator and discriminator to tackle the task of learning 8 cross 8 image, 16 cross 16 image and so on, until we generate a full blown 1024 cross 1024 image. Pretty cool right? The newly added layers are treated as a residual block. The new layers are treated as residual blocks, where the contribution of direct upsample resolution is smoothly decreased. 
and for learning the weights of the super resolution block, it is slowly increased. This is why we should remember old concepts like multi-resolution analysis and signal processing. Who knows when such concepts spring up to be relevant. One and all rules for training GAMs. It ain't DC comic, it's DC GAM. DC GANs is a paper which talks about guidelines to train a convolutional GAN. These guidelines are A. Replace pooling with strided convolution in discriminator and fractional strided convolution in generator. The author's point is that let the model learn its downsampling rather than us shoving it down the throat via pooling or static selection. B. Eliminate the fully connected layers on the top of convolutional layers because they mix up the locality of features which makes it very difficult to discriminate. C. Use patch norm in both generator and discriminator because it stabilizes the learning process and makes the data have zero mean and one variance. It even goes ahead and reduces the mode collapse problem. But beware, you should avoid using batch norm at the end of the generator and beginning of the discriminator's input to avoid sample oscillations and model instability. C. Use leaky relu for discriminator and use relu for the generators except the last layer where you should use 10H to learn more quickly. It also demonstrates the power of latent space by performing vector arithmetic in the space and showing its meaningful translation in image space. But one of the most interesting experiment is in terms of image in painting. The generator was made to generate images without windows by suppressing the bounding box containing windows from the generator's output. This was done via learning a window map at the second last convolution layer. The model then tries to complete the mass region with a wall or appropriate item, and the results are incredible. It ain't alchemy, it's hardcore math. Bringing stability, banishing the mode collapse. With a bit of vodka, get the model high, making it map continuous. That's WGAN, guys. WGANs are amazing because of the way they model an adversary. The critic here is trying to estimate the distance between the generated image and the real image while the generator is trying to tune the parameters such that the distance is minimized. The best thing is that the output of the critic is a meaningful measure of the difference between the distribution, the earth moves distance measure. Plus, it eliminates the problem of mode collapse because the generator is not moving towards a single point or mode favored by the discriminator, rather it is moving towards the distribution itself. The paper has a lot of math explained why the earth moves distance rocks and ensures continuity and almost differentiability of probability mapping under some constraints. Control diversity Proportionate increase it is. I don't know what rhymes with it, so began it is. Now in began, we are considering encoder decoder as a discriminator. The objective here is to make the auto encoder loss distribution of real and fake images closer in terms of earth movers distance. This is a kind of a hack to match the distributions of real and fake images. And moreover, the reconstruction loss affects each pixel directly. Now instead of enforcing Lipschitz conditions like WGANs, it considers the lower bound of distance and works with it. But do note, in WGANs, we meddle with the distance between the image distribution. But here we are meddling with autoencoder losses. The lower bound is given by the absolute difference between the mean of the reconstruction loss distributions. Based on these two probabilities, it considers maximizing the difference for the discriminator and minimizing the same for generator. It also introduces the diversity coefficient, which is approximately equal to the ratio of expected loss generated to expected loss of the original image. 
Ideally, this should be one, but we don't want generator to ever become overconfident and have the distribution similar to the original images. Hence, we keep the mean slightly lower than the original images. If we keep it close to zero, then the diversity in generated images will be less as it focuses more on auto-encoding real images. We maintain the ratios by updates inspired by proportional control theory, where we introduce a variable KT while training. This helps us keep up with the diversity ratio while training. The point when the convergence arrives is well defined unlike GANs. The generator and discriminator updates are parallel. Plus, we get rid of enforcing lipchick conditions also. That's why Began is a pretty cool paper and a must read. randomness in encoder to whip the latent space and make it in order the only twist is in the training part adding adversary and that's VAE GAN now variational autoencoder is a powerful idea which ensures smoothness in the latent space learned this is because the decoder is using randomly altered versions of encoded vector I guess Archive Insight has done a truly amazing job in doing justice to the math insights involved in VAE. Check out the video link in the description. Now VAE GAN considers the decoder part as generator for GANs and along with the original loss, we also have an adversarial loss. In the original loss, we maximize the expectation of X given Z, while Z is stochastic in nature. We restrict the variability of latent space in VAE by a regularizer term bringing it closer to uniform normal distribution. Now for decoder, or you can say generator, we add two more terms which makes efforts to improve the decoder alone and encoder-decoder together to fool the discriminator. On the other hand, the discriminator tries to get better by creating rift between generated images and original images. Three cheers to Larson et al for his wonderful paper. A pinch of RL, some crumbs of GAN, and make it crunchy by crumbs of RNN. The paper is out of box symphony. So here sequence GAN, hot and ready. Sequence GAN is an interesting GAN because it attempts to combine RL, sequence learning, and GANs in a sensible way. It treats the sequence as a reinforcement learning decision process and treats the generator model as the agent. It employs the discriminator as a critic which gives the score based on the likelihood of fooling it. The paper uses policy gradient and Monte Carlo search to learn the sequence. It follows this reinforced strategy. The generator is an RNN while the discriminator is a CNN. The reason for using CNN instead of RNN for discriminator is because of its greater effectiveness as discriminator. Now we learn the discriminator based on the sequence generated by G and this is then compared to the real sequences. On the other hand, the generator rolls out various sequences from the current state. We attach the discriminator score for each episode spawn and we learn the policy based on the expected reward for the state action pair. This can be a really good starting point for people looking into topics which intersect RL, time series modeling, and utilizing adversarial objective. And don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update from Crazy News.